guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to show how we build a temp service if you've ever wondered how today we're going to show you so stick around Okay, so temp services are used for a variety of reasons, uh, usually to, to provide temporary power to a home. Um, and we're going to build a temp service here for this uh, insurance job that we're on that had a fire and the, the home, uh, the existing electrical service was destroyed. So we're going to put up a temp service, um, including building the tripod, so that the uh, construction team can have power to start restoring the home. So I should mention that we're from Canada, so we're going by the Canadian Electrical Code instead of the uh, U.S. one. So just check uh, with your uh, local building codes and your local inspectors to see if it varies any different from ours, because um, ours are very specific. And we should also remind you that you should never do your own electrical work. However, uh, building a tripod is more carpentry, and we're going to show that today. So. If you can save yourself some money by building the tripod for your electrician, providing that you check with them, um, can't see why not. So anyway, um, enjoy the show. Start this project out with uh, three two by six by 16 feet long. So what we have to do is we have to laminate those together and that's gonna be the main part where we actually build the temp service on. So we need to laminate those together with galvanized nails and then there's a center bolt which is uh, three quarter by eight inches which needs to go through the, the middle and then as well at the top uh, for the rack to support. So the next piece of this puzzle is we have to cut four stakes uh, 32 inches long so that we can drive down in on the ends of the point of the tripod to hold it in place so that when the utility hooks their wire up um, they uh, have some support. And you can see here at the top, we've drilled our big bolts through and we have our porcelain rack on the front here. This is where the utility actually would hook onto the, the uh, with the triplex from the pole. And then we're also bolting it together in the middle here for extra support. Now we're gonna flip it over and start putting the temp service on it. The next step is to mount this microelectric meter base onto the laminated board that we've put together. So we've laminated uh, two half inch boards to make one uh, one inch um, and we've made it the size of the and we are going to uh, mount it on to the uh, temp boards themselves and I just want to take note that those lugs at the top are where the meter is going to be that's measured to a maximum height of six feet so it needs to be between four and six feet however uh, this whole apparatus on the bottom where the breaker goes and then the plugs underneath we keep that up as high as we can, which is six feet to the top of the meter. So we're gonna go ahead and mount that uh, with just our screws and then start building the top of the service. Got our meter base in place and we've got our inch and a quarter PVC hub at the top there. And now we're gonna go ahead and screw the meter base to the actual temp itself. And then we'll start building, like I said, the top of the mast there. So now the guys have the top of the service mast on. Um, I should mention that it is inch and a quarter PVC and we have an inch and a quarter FE or fitting entrance at the top. Um, so what we're using is we're using number one new all aluminum wire XLPE rated for outdoor use. Um, and that's one of the first hots. So we're gonna go and tie that into the top of the meter base. We also have a neutral and then we have another hot. Um, this point of attachment rack here is exactly six inches down from the top of the fitting entrance um, Which is what we need to have for code here. So the overall height of this service is 16 feet from the ground level um, And that's what we follow for specifications on our temporary services So now we're stripping these connections um, we're going to go inside the meter base and where this is aluminum wire, we have to use antiox or antioxidant. And this needs to get under uh, the lugs with a set of Allen keys, and then we torque them down. So hopefully the guys don't cut their fingers off here. And then that's going to line up with that white neutral there on the top. Um, and this is the line side of the meter, or the line side of the meter base. So what we're doing next uh, to rain in, so we just come to get out of the rain for a little bit, um, 
we're doing up these PVC FS boxes with three quarter inch uh, conduit with two TAs and we're going to put GFIs on these within use covers and run 12 gauge wire uh, these are 20 amp T-slot GFIs we're going to run 12 gauge wire up through and then we're going to hook these into the bottom of the temp service to give the uh, contractors um, two 20 amp T-slot GFIs now this sounds weird but it's going to actually go on a 30 amp breaker um, which we're permitted to do specifically on this temporary service so here's a close-up of the receptacle that we're we're putting on. So we actually have 12 gauge wire strip, white glass on the ground. Uh, the ground is wrapped around the bottom of the box, and then we're using a weather weather resistant Levington um, uh, 20 amp T slot receptacle. So you can see there that it is weather resistant on the bottom, and then of course we just match our colors up on the back on the line side, which would be the white goes on the neutral and the black goes on the hot. So he's going to go ahead and put that in the box after he attaches the ground. If you're wondering why he's doing that with an impact gun is because we have the sensitivity set on the impact gun to only go so far um, so that we don't over torque it. And then that gets shoved into the box. You're a beautiful hand model. I know, right? Now he's going to straighten up the GFI, just make sure it's in there good and tight, make sure there's no wires touching anything. And then he's going to put an in-use cover on. So an in-use cover is code here in Canada. It's something that we have to have over all outside receptacles. They're actually called a heavy-duty in-use cover. And what that is is so that you can take uh, a device or a cord and plug into the back of the... Uh, into the receptacle and then close the cover over top of it and that keeps any water off the receptacle um, basically it's a, it's a fail safe for nuisance tripping because we were getting a lot of nuisance tripping calls uh, for these was that a put together one? oh wait these are so you can see that he has his cover on now. This opens and closes. Down over the device, the plug cord end comes out through the bottom here, and then the consumer or the contractor can plug stuff in, and this slides out to adapt to the back of the cord. So these are ready to go into the uh, bottom of the temp service. Okay, so we're getting rained on here, but we're going to show this anyway. So we put the two GFIs with the in-use covers, run our lock nuts up through, our grounds go under our ground bar, right to the casing. Our ground wire goes to the neutral bar here in Canada, which goes down to our ground wire, which is going to go to our rod. And then we have uh, our two whites, which go underneath the neutral as well. And then one side, um, the 12 gauge wire goes to the 30 amp breaker, I know. And then the other plug goes to the other side of the 30 amp breaker. And we must have a double pole for, uh, for service rate, uh, service entrance rated, so that's why we have to do it this way. Kind of ridiculous, but that's how we do it. That's what passes. So he's just going to finish tightening that down and then give a tug on everything to make sure it's good. And then we're going to back this screw out here. Box can go in the garbage. That one goes up. It goes on. The bottom one goes on first. The bottom one goes on. The compartment is open. Goes on the brake. And that screw goes on. Get down on that. There you go screw in there so that's what protects the bottom compartment and then the top compartment goes on for the meter slides up in place and close that down on and beat down on that joint there connector and there we go now put that uh, plastic thing on that you left over there 
That covers up the top of the meter base to keep water from getting into it until it gets inspected. And then we put our, our uh, ring on. That goes in there and then our ring goes on over. Just going together around the outside, yep. Close that up and tighten it. And next we're going to shore it up. So we're going to put the uh, bottom of the tripod on and then stand the whole baby up. Well, in case you were wondering, we got totally rained out the other day. So we had to come back up to do a few adjustments to the temp service the other day. And we had to get it up off the ground because we didn't want it to uh, get taken away in the neighborhood we are. So I'll go through it the best I can and show you what we did. So this is the service. Obviously we've put it up. Um, basically what we did was um, we had the main part of the mast here that we showed you on the ground which is 16 feet long and then we erected two 16 foot uh, 2 by 6 boards that way across the bottom and back up that way on the outside and then we stood the whole thing up like a sail. Once we did that we put another 2 by uh, 6 by 16 on the front and then we put our cross piece to the back and then our our piece, our support piece up the back, which is also two by six by sixteen. Um, the pieces that go across the center center supports are two by four by ten. They go across the center, and then we additionally we had to drive stakes all the way around. So those are two by four stakes: one, two, three on the back, and four. So we have to have a hundred pounds of weight. Um, we couldn't get any sandbags because the recent storm, so we had to go with pellets. Um, concrete was uh, didn't want to work for us. So anyway, I've got 120 pounds of pellets on the back, and that keeps counterweight on the back of it in case anything does pull out. In addition, we came down with our number six wire, and then drove our six foot ground rod with our clamp. So here in Canada, we're required to have a six foot ground rod instead of a 10 foot on a temp service only. If we were doing a service entrance, then we would have to have. Uh, two 10-foot rods or a plate and then additionally we also put a uh, Another support in the center to keep it from moving So all in total it's 16 feet tall Right up to the top. We have our point of attachment through the top and Here's where our combination meter base goes. So this is a double pole 30 like we showed you before which goes into two single T-slot 20 amp GFCI receptacles for construction purposes um, so that they can actually uh, hook up and have power. Now the main lines in this are rated at number one which is good for 100 amps number one aluminum but we of course through the er internal connections of the meter we reduce it down to uh, a 30 amp breaker so this is technically only a 30 amp temp service for again for construction purposes. So that is how we erect service up here in the true north of Canada. Um, like I said, we just put it up because we had a, a storm come through and this one actually ripped the service right off the house and then the house caught on fire. So they're actually, we've had to put a temp up so they can do restoration inside the house through the insurance company. Um, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on our next video. Bye for now.